All right, this is it. We're not stopping. There's no edit. No freaking editing here. This is a mostly photo uh, podcast for those of you that are new here or stumbled upon this show. Uh, we are on YouTube, uh, but you should probably try to listen to the audio. I actually enjoy the audio more. You know why? Because you don't have to see our faces. You know, Ooh. I make the stupidest faces. Yes, you do. <laughs> You're not supposed to agree, buddy. No, but you know what? I, I make them even stupider, so, you know. I think we all as humans have, like, perception. Mm -hmm. Reality. <laughs> In this episode, Mo switches to Fuji. <laughs> Clickbait. <laughs> Oh, We're going to talk street photography uh, and a, maybe give our tips and tricks on street photography. Uh, and let's start with uh, Mo quote switches to the Fuji system. What's going on there? So uh, I'm in the process of looking for a new lens for my camera. I'm in the process of, of getting a new camera for me to take onto the streets. And um, Omar was nice enough to let me borrow the X-T2 with the 56 one point. 1.2, baby. 1.2, the 35. Don't F2, be 1.4ing that lens. And the amazing kit lens that Fuji offers at the 1855 F2 through F4 variable range. No matter what has comes out of this whole thing, that is the most impre impressive kit lens I've ever used. Absolutely. And and it should never have been called a kit lens. I wish they would have called it like a mid-range zoom. It comes with the kit. I know, but <laughs> that's why it's a kit lens. No, th there is a kit lens which is the sixteen to fifty. It's but like it's the an XC. I mean, it's yeah. Not the well, I'm saying XC. That one's the real kit lens. Yeah, that's this the is kit the lens. kit lens upgrade. It should be like kit lens two point oh. Uh, so, uh, so basically, I've, I've been taking out to you know do a couple of uh, shoots with it, see how it feels. I've only taken it out twice because I've been un under the weather myself. Plus, the weather's been under the weather itself. Yeah. Um, but first thing I noticed, um, I love the camera. I uh, love the. The lenses, I love the looks I'm getting out of it. I understand why everyone makes such a big deal of the Fuji film simulations. Yeah. Because I love the black and white. Uh, oh, Acros. Uh, I love that. I was like, I live here. I'm That's, gonna move. Isn't in. it nice? Yeah. The last time I shot JPEG on a Nikon was a D5000. So I was like, this is. Uh, I'd rather edit these myself and yeah. figure something out. But you are spoiled, and that's why you didn't like the Sony ones as much because you had the Fuji first. Um. I would half agree with you. I think most of it is that when I brought my RAWs into Lightroom, I couldn't get anything as good as mm. the JPEGs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where in on my Sony and my Canon, if I process the RAW, it's better than their JPEGs. So that's the their JPEGs beat my, or they just make what I want, you know, to start. So I actually found myself editing the JPEGs. The files are smaller. You can post really quickly. You can put them on your phone. So again, as a secondary camera, I do get people that say, hey, sh can I shoot weddings with these cameras? And you totally can, but are you probably should be shooting RAW and JPEG just to make sure you have the uh, dynamic range and, you know. Definitely, speaking of dynamic range, um, I took one picture today specifically and I underexposed it. I raised, back in Lightroom, I bumped it up four stops. Was it a raw file? It, it was a raw file. Oh, okay. I bumped it up four stops from the XT XT two, and I was like, "Wow, that's." But then I took the same picture with the Sony and bumped it up eight stops. Yeah, yeah. The Sony like, is. I was like, "Wow!" Like I just kept going. I just finally stopped at eight. So let's talk about that really quick because I didn't know what people were were like raving about as far as like hey, the dynamic range. I'm like, you don't really need that much because just making up words. <laughs> no, I was saying like we get stuff as best as we can in camera. Like we get it right, um, and I think. I got stuff mostly right in camera because I knew the limitations of my Canon, mm -hmm. right? So I knew that I couldn't go way too dark because I would get super grain bringing up that slider over two. Checking like accidental mistakes that were dark from the Sony files and bringing that up. All the files I gave him basically. <laughs> yeah, like we talked about yeah. that last time. Like those, they were totally normal. It was, we're talking three stops, four stops. And um, so impressive with the dynamic range on the Sony, a huge plus. Yeah. So ultimately, I'm finding that um, the, again, I love the XT2. It's been fun for the. the I've been playing with it in the hand, um, just trying to memorize where stuff is. You yeah, know, because, it takes a little bit because of time. the dials. While I love the dials, they're so foreign to me. You know. Yeah. So I had to realize that you know shutter, uh, iOS, ISO, shutter, and then this, and thing, then the actual aperture. aperture. I don't like the aperture ring. You don't like it. I'm not a fan of the aperture ring because. 
I was at uh, F1.2, then I was at 5.6. Oh, you bumped it. So it's not something I'm trained to do. So. Some of them are more bumpable. Yeah, yeah the, you know, uh, the 85 millimeter 1.4 lens for the Sony, mm-hmm. the G Master one, I bumped that too. I was at 2A. I'm like, I ain't shooting at 2A, yo. No, so that's what it was with the, the Buttermaster, the 56. It's a Buttermaster first of all. You saw it? Yeah, yeah so that's yeah. what happened to me. I was, I was at 1.2. And the next thing I know, I was at five. You're like, what happened to the ball? Like, Why is everything so dark? What's going on here? And then yeah. I'm like, oh, because you have fat hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, All right. We're, we'll start with our street photography tips. Ooh. Tip number one: Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> if you're scared and shy, stay home. Drink milk <laughs> and cry in your corner of the couch, realizing in fear it's not what you want to do. All right. Well, we'll get to being out on the street in a second, but let's uh, have topics. So our first topic, uh, we're going to bounce off what we were kind of talking about is what gear you should bring out with you. And give me your f- number one tip or one tip. All right. So if I in my ideal situation for a street photography, I have one camera, a couple batteries, one lens. I don't have 15 lenses. I don't have, uh, you know, uh, a big, big bag. I need something that is quick, portable, and ready to go. Great. I agree. I say uh, stay away from these backpacks where you have all your lenses and compartments, where you have to change your lens, take a backpack off. I would say a side bag, like what you said. Um, I would I would say uh, have a general purpose lens, like a 35 or this 27 millimeter uh, two, 2.8. And then I would say a longer lens, like how you like to shoot an 85. So, uh, but I do like your advice of just having one lens because it it may overwhelm you switching lenses and trying different right. things. It's better if you just go with the general 35 millimeter focal length. Right. That that whether that's full frame or 23 around 23, 27 for a crop. For a crop. Right? Yeah. Uh, I think that's great advice. Think, Single lens is good advice. Especially, yeah. you know what? Because that that makes you agile and nimble. You can get in and out. Pick. You put the camera away. Take it right out. Snap. You don't yeah. have to worry about. You don't have to think about. Oh, I should get get this lens on it. Put. Let me, let me take my backpack off. Let me. Yeah. Let me take this lens off. Let me do this. You're wasting time. You're not only wasting time. It also, I think it. It frees you from... You don't have to think about you don't anything think about other life. than how am I going to pose a shot with what I have right exactly. now. Exactly. So that's number one tip. I would say my second street photography tip is to have a smaller camera. Uh, don't have something like that's a DSLR with a battery grip with a 35. I don't think... bring out the 1X. One <laughs> yeah, 1DX. One it won't bring the X. <laughs> with a 400 millimeter bird Nikon, photography uh, lens. D5. Yeah, totally. So I think um, the tinier the better. So you did argue that the XT2 is big, and I agree. I don't. I'm not as comfortable streetwise with that uh, XT20 with nothing at the bottom. This is the XT30, but small. And again, it goes to two reasons. One, you can walk around all day with it, and two, you don't look like a um, photojournalist. Right, you trying- look touristy. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, uh, nine out of ten times, uh, people with huge DSLRs are going to scare people. Yeah. Uh, they're going to make people get angry, get scared, and uh, not want to participate or not, you know, look away. If you have a small little camera, people automatically dismiss you. Yeah, for oh, sure. That's the first thought. I mean, some people just have shady lives and are going to stare at you and realize what's going on. But <laughs> yeah. for the mo- for most part, if you bring out a small little black box like this and you shoot at hip level, you know, with your little, you yeah. know, little flippy flip. Or even if you put it up to your eye, you look like a dork, you mm-hmm. know? So I saw uh, Sean Tucker mention that he was doing some street photography with his phone using his headphone jack. Mm. And that the volume up on your headphone jack can actually snap a picture. Right. And so he spent one afternoon sort of using the phone. And, you know, we're all on our phones. No, Think about no one thinking anything of your junky camera. Nobody's going to think anything with your phone up. Especially in the crowded street. Or the subway. Mm-hmm. You know, how many times have you looked across the aisle and someone is on their phone? You don't know if they're taking a picture of and you. And if you want to really be crazy, be like, and be talking to me like, I mean, uh, nene, want that? <laughs> yeah. Just talk to yourself and make it even crazier. People believe, oh, he's on the phone. That's why you're holding that little microphone thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you can you can practice your street photography with, you know, your phone if if you have. So that that's a little tip, too. If you're not so crazy about going out and trying street photography like you're embarrassed, then do the phone with the little headphone thing. That might. I like that idea. It's yeah. a really good idea. So we we covered uh, what kind of camera you should bring, um, the lenses. Lenses should be one lens around thirty five, uh, and you can even do it with your phone. I never. There's there's no reason to bring two lenses. I agree. If, if I agree. you don't have an all around lens, 
then pick one of your primes. I what, what what's your thought on zoom versus you know because a lot of cameras that people buy already come with the eighteen to fifty. Yeah, if, if that's have, what if, you have, if, if if you have a kit, uh, if you have a, a entry level camera with a kit lens or a great camera with a kit lens, that's what you run with. That's yeah. all you have. That's all you have. Yeah. If you have a, a more expensive zoom lens, twenty four to seventy, take that with you. Whatever you have. That's going to allow you the versatility and the freedom of knowing that's all you have. Totally. Don't take don't take an eighty five if you hate being close to people or far away from people. Whatever the lens is going to create more obstacles for you mentally. Don't take that one. Yeah, yeah. Unless of course you're going out there to challenge yourself. Oh if, yeah. If you're going out there specifically to get something that you want, which we'll cover in a second, then take the lens that you're most comfortable with. Good. And, and good. we all have a comfortable lens. Yeah. And I was going to say that if if you do have a zoom lens, well, if that's all you have, maybe just park it on 23 35 millimeters that way when you come back and look at your photographs there there's a consistency and so everything has the same field of view so if you have a zoom lens tape that mother with some duct tape or just get a little band (laughs) that works too no duct tape they have sponsored by gorilla duct tape (laughs) (laughs) all right so that's our first what else we got here let's see we got gear uh lenses all right go ahead number three the purpose. What is the purpose of going out there to shoot? So uh, don't go out there. This is what I totally do, random. Don't go out there and say, whatever happens, happens. That that might work fine if, you live in, if you're live if you in New York City because something will happen. Don't go somewhere unless in your head you know why you're going there. I mean, I'm going to go there and get some people's faces. I'm going to go out there and capture some historic uh, you know, landmarks. I'm going out there to just get some eclectic walls. Something in your mind that gets you focus again once you're there you could deviate you could deviate yeah but, but you want to have a plan going out there because if you, nothing worse than going out somewhere and then because you don't have a plan to begin with you feel like you've accomplished nothing yeah i feel like a lot of my i do go out and i say i'm gonna do street photography and then i am hunting and when i come back there's just a spattering of uh this person walking and someone crossing and then a cab and and i'm trying to fish like i'm fishing Instead, there was another time I went out that I said, it's about bicycles. Mm. I said, this will only be about bicycles. And so I started to make art with the bicycles in the street, but also like the messengers. There's so many bicycles in New York. And then you start to get creative because you're like, hey, there's an old lady with like a little dog and she's part of the project. She's rolling a little Mm. old bicycle with her and Uh the dog in the basket. And then so that sparks you because it's in your, you know, subject area. And again, like I said, if yeah. Omar sees something else happening, he'll deviate from bicycles. But it's always better to have a plan than go in there hopelessly. Yeah, and if you want to Google, there's there's a lot of like photography projects. Like some stuff is just the color red, or shoot all black and white. So look up some some. We would link them below, but we're not gonna on your own, son <laughs> and daughters. <laughs> oh, and uh, the other thing that we talked about is that. When we go out, we don't realize that we're capturing uh, the city in its current form. Like for this, the the photograph you take is the only photograph that exists at that moment. And okay. So Omar brings that up because he and I both like looking back at black and whites or even colored photos of the city from 1940, 1920s, Damn, Even 97, there was a shot of the someone on the street by Trinity Church and the World Trade Center was back there. Mm. It's like... That's, you know. So every time you go out there and you're taking pictures, remember, as long as you're saving these pictures somewhere, a hard drive, a printed album, you could always go back and look at the history you just captured that's no longer there because the world doesn't stand still too long. Yeah. And my example when we were talking about it is like uh, blockbuster videos used Mm. to be everywhere or even like Palmer video, which was the competitor. That's a Northeast thing. Yeah. Yeah. Palmer. I'm sure. Northeast thing. Yeah. But I'm sure everyone in their small town had a video store. Bob's video place. Come on down now. Get your video. (laughs) Totally. And if you had a picture of Bob's video place or someone drinking a coffee, you know, that that's history in your town. There is a city out there and you can put in the comments. I can't remember, but there is a city out there that still has a blockbuster because they're so small. Oh, yeah. That people still go and and rent videos from that blockbuster. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. Cool. So capturing history is is important when you do street photography. So you should be trying to get art, but in the back of the in back of your mind, you should be thinking, "Hey, these cabs in forty years, this you know type of cab will look cool." 
I don't know if they'll look cool. I don't know. They'll look better. I mean, I mean, they're not gonna be like Cuba where everything is awesome. No, oh, I mean, look cars at cars uh, in Cuba. Yeah, I want to go to Cuba. Man, cars have gone downhill, man. Well, they're more aerodynamic, but they're not as sexy. No, oh, man. all those fifties cars are so those powerful muscle men. I mean, cars. <laughs> Whoa! It's so hot in here. Freudian <laughs> slip there. <laughs> Wasn't Freudian. <laughs> that was hit number one. Cheers. So. <laughs> all right. Next tip is when you should go. Um, So it depends on your city, but we're in the New York area, so we'll talk about it. Um, I would say, you know, usually the advice is to go when there's the best light, but I feel like New York doesn't really matter. No, because it's nine, ten times, you're in canyons anyway. You're in canyons of shade, so So you just pick the other side of the street. Exactly. Let's forget New York. Let's say if someone's going to Tampa Bay Mm. or Seattle, then you should go during sundown, sunrise. So let's say you're shooting Miami on the Strip. Mm -hmm then you you know the sun rises on you know the east that's going to light up all the beautiful hotels and stuff you should get up at 4 a.m. and try to get people who are first out or stay out till after sundown when the lights start coming up yeah i like that planet. concept i like the concept of I, I wherever i go out in town somewhere in vacation i get up at crack of dawn and and there's nothing to me more uh storytelling you know, I'm an idiot. Who, what do I know? But to me, there's nothing more storytelling than who's out, who's up, getting <laughs> like, getting ready to make the city run. Yeah, because nine out of ten times, people who are up that That's time a good theme. are the ones that are gonna get the city running. And I usually try to get those people who are about to go open the bagel shop, who are about to go yeah, start delivering, cool. you know, the routes on the papers or whatever they're doing. They still got paper routes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. But you know, that's that. That's why I love. I prefer AM shoots always. Yeah. Um, I get bothered by the the PM shoots because there's so much going on at that point too. It's now the rest of the world is out there. They're trying to enjoy what's going on, but that doesn't mean you, you shouldn't do it. I just I'm an eight. I'll I'll get up early. Yeah, it should be something you plan for sure. I, I think it goes with whatever city you're in. Uh, New York doesn't matter, mm-hmm. uh, but West Coast, East Coast, sunrise, sunset. If you're on an island, you want to definitely get those beautiful sunsets. Right? Yeah, you know for sure. And if you're in Phoenix in noon, then it's bad. Or Albuquerque, <laughs> like don't go out in the middle of the day because you have overhead sun and no canyons and no shade. Um, can you do street photography? Sure, just black and white it. High contrast, <laughs> black and white. There you go. So, should you go out for, uh, when should you go out for shoots? Not necessarily talking about time of day, but season, event, what's going on? Especially if you're struggling. Right. I think it's good to hit like a some kind of event. If, if or, you're in New York, you have a parade every other weekend. Uh, just and about. that's easy pickings. So, again, wherever you are. Also, people expect cameras like at a parade. Mm-hmm. So, you know, someone who has like a crazy headdress or something for the parade, they're they going to want you their, to be photographed. Totally. Take my picture. Take yeah. it now. Exactly. So, so that's exactly what you like. Like, I mean, we have the Puerto Rican Day Parade. We have the, the New York Marathon. We have Columbus Day. We yeah, have Valiance. Parade for this, Parade for that. Yeah. We have, uh, you know, just any, your town, I'm sure there's at least one or two parades. Uh, even my small town that I live in here in New Jersey has a Fourth of July Parade, has a Easter yeah, Parade. A Memorial Day Parade. So, so those are the times where you will have people who are not going to be suspecting you to take their photo. And won't mind either because you're all be out there. Set up, you're all out there for the same reason, being festive. Unless you're that miserable yeah. person with the kick me sign. <laughs> yeah, and I would say you can do. You know, as the parade is going on, maybe your street photography can be behind the scenes, like whoever's not engaged in watching the parade. But there's a lot of people that you can practice with. You can always turn to your left. People watching the parade, you can capture them. You could turn to your right, and you can see who's actually working behind the scenes on the parade. There's so much to take in into. It's so much to see. If you look, yeah, uh, there's so many people who just look through their phone or look through uh, yeah, their yeah. camera. But if you actually look for people or things to shoot, there's a little dog there looking at the dog at, at the parade floats walking by. Yeah, that's a cute picture. You yeah, know? and you could get a picture of sneakers and the dog. You know, like just you find little things like that. And I think another just bouncing off that is. Uh, stop walking around. Just stop walking around and hunting and hunting. Park in, yourself. In one of our previous videos where we talked about uh, uh, methods of capturing street photography, I told you, I sit down, I, I look at my camera, I look at the lens, and people just walk by me all day and don't even notice me and, there. Yeah. And snap, snap, snap. And I'm getting what I want. every now and then you get someone that's really interesting. And I think we should skew into like people now because that's what we're talking about. And Really, the ultimate goal for a lot of us is a, an amazing street photography photo is a person in the environment, in the city. Because you could take a picture of a you know fish market, 
But if there's someone like lighting a cigarette outside of that fish market, like, damn, print that, brother. I love cigarette smokers. I mean, not really, but, but really I do. You <laughs> not know? the people, but like in a photo. Yeah. I they think add an element, you know? They, they add that grit to it automatically. Grit, especially in a fish market. Imagine a fish yeah. market rain and someone like lighting a cigarette. Damn. Uh, Digital Rev, I used to love when he would go out there and, you know, always catch someone cutting he up was the fish. someone in their like sandals. Yeah, like. Cut, cutting fish up or working some kind of meat stuff. Pushing there, garbage around. He had a cigarette in his mouth with the ashes falling. I'm yeah. like, I'm like... At first, I was like, why he's taking that picture? Then I'm like, oh, that's a nice picture. I like that shot. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I like, you're right. Get someone in the picture to help tell your story. Are you telling a story? Yeah. And then that's where you, that's where street photography, we were talking about fear and mm-hmm. in the corner. And I think that's where some of us, we go back to shooting the bicycles. <laughs> you know, because that's Safety hard net. to get that picture of mm-hmm. the guy smoking and the, you know, maybe two lovers kissing somewhere. I mean, how awesome would that be? You you catch a moment between two people. I did once, on, but they were under an umbrella. Mm. So the umbrella blocked them and I got their legs. That was like super safe. It was know? still a nice picture, if I'm sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's, that's, that's it. Like, you know, people holding hands, people walking together or, or, or not. I mean, you don't have to do anything we're saying here. These are just ideas, suggestions that will help you fine tune whatever it is you want. And and if you go back home and you realize I took 18 pictures of these, these different fire hydrants, maybe you just like fire hydrants and that's fine. Yeah. Remember why you're taking photos? Because they're for you. Yeah. They're for you. you know, and so then, yeah, you share with the world, but yeah, make, keep doing what you want to do. You're showing this off because you're happy that you took that picture of that yeah. fire hydrant or of that. You know, it's so horse. funny you say that. Yeah. I, I, I want to shoot pictures of the bicycles and then I keep thinking I have to, get the you know the moments of of uh you know people on the street and i'm not happy doing that you know so, so like to, i shouldn't so stick, stick to, to the bicycles uh, the bike messenger going by getting him like you know uh, i've gotten shots of bicycles where i chop off their heads like you have enough information you, you know you have enough ammunition in this area if you oh, just wanted yeah. to shoot bicycles only yeah. or bicyclists it or... could be book after book after book it exactly. could be bicycles of new york yeah do not steal that idea. <laughs> Stolen already. What is that acronym? Uh, Bicycles of uh, Boney. Boney. That's <laughs> not touching that one. Yeah. Okay, safety. How do we stay safe? Safe. Uh, so first, one of the first things you could do to stay safe is what we covered right off the beginning when we started about street photography today. Minimize what you got on you. Yeah. Minimize your gear. The more gear you have, the more target you look. Um, don't go by yourself. I mean, nine ten times you're gonna end up going by yourself, yeah, because that's just timing in life. But if you can avoid going by yourself, that's gonna make you feel that's gonna make you safer off the bat. Don't go into places that. Hold you, on, hold on, you're going too fast. I'm gonna back up too. Hold your thought because I like what you're gonna say. Don't go through places. Going back to gear, have a camera that you don't mind losing. Mm. Right. If you had a Leica that was five thousand dollars, I think you'd mind losing it. But if you had an M fifty that you're rocking, <laughs> you know, you got a Black Friday special at five hundred bucks. Go ahead, you know, like if Here they're you gonna go, rob you, enjoy. Yeah, like you know send how we me, stress about being mugged. Mm-hmm. Well, be mugged. Like think about that. Try to be like if I'm in this new city in let's say, um, let's say Europe in some weird little alley somewhere. You're not. You're from here, and they hold you up with a knife. Give them your freaking camera. Give them your wallet, because your money's hidden in your shoe. <laughs> They'll never look there. It's in between my toe skin. <laughs> it's in my crack. Oh my! <laughs> you can keep it, sir. You're not buying from you know bagels from my shop. <laughs> I'll tell you where the money is, man. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? It's like I go out with. I know the Fuji XT20. Like now, you can get it for like 500 bucks. But if they take it, they take it. Like, let them take it. Your life is not worth it. Your family's life ain't worth it, you know. So think about that. There's nothing There's nothing besides your own life worth your life. Simple as that. Love Give it. it up. Love it. Deep. All right. You were saying don't go down the wrong. So if, if you go down a block where you were just walking with 30 people and now you become the only person on that block, turn around. Yeah. Turn around and get back to the group. Uh, stay surrounded by people. That doesn't mean you're going to be safe from everything. It's just like but it your maximizes chances. your yeah. chances of getting back home safely. I think life is all about that. Like, what are your? If you're gonna go cycling with no helmet, well, there goes your, you know, percentages of death. For instance, <laughs> even 
uh, lions, they don't hunt individual. They don't hunt the pack. They hunt an individual that falls off the pack. Totally. They, so they know their energy. Yeah. Are the same exact way. They're, yeah. they're not going to go out of their way to attack you within the group. It's when you veer off to yourself that you're more likely to become a target. And the last one is ethics for street photography. I think these are like the general rules. Don't be an ass. You know, don't... Um, if that, someone says, don't take my picture, don't take their picture. Yeah. If, if you know, don't don't shove a flash at someone's face. Oh, wait, we're picking on that guy again. What's his name? Uh, I don't know. That guy's a jerk. He's going to find me and kill me. <laughs> He'll talk about my picture taken. Yeah, but I think... Uh, uh, I'm not into it, shock photography. So I will never, never, ever force my camera on someone's face and take a picture. Yeah, but we also talked about, remember, like the flip side of that, that being shady is also ethically like shady. You know what I mean? You, you know what? Here, here's the thing, right? Like, do I feel good about that picture because I was all shady and she's on the, let's say she's on a bench looking beautiful, reading a book and I was all Mr. I want to make a street, you know? Okay. So I'm going to run this one by you. All and right. You let me know how you feel about it. Okay. I... Broke the law by driving 35 miles an hour, an hour in a 25 mile an hour zone. Ooh, reckless. Or yeah. I punched a random person in the street. Both are against the law, but one is less than the other. All right. So if I take a person's picture who's at a bench minding her own business and I keep moving, she's not hurt, I have a picture. Okay. If I shove my camera in someone's face, I have now traumatized someone. All right, there you're being a slightly aggressive. I'm being yeah. slightly aggressive, and I've taken a picture forcefully. Okay. Outside of someone's will. Okay, I can see your point. I mean, both of them. The whole thing of street photography is you're doing something without someone else's knowledge or without the regards of their knowledge. Yeah, I think people who say they ask. Should I ask to take someone's picture? I think you're out of the realm of street photography mm -hmm. now. You're now into street portraiture. Only time you ask. Which is totally okay. Mm -hmm. But don't call yourself a street photographer if you are positioning people. And you're creating and the shot. You're creating the shot. So the only time I ever ask someone to do, uh, to if I could take their photo, is if, one, I get a feeling that it's going to be a hostile type of thing, and I want the shot. So if I want the shot, and, and, and I, but I don't want the aggravation that's going to come with it, Okay. I will have no problem going up to that person and say, do you mind if I take your picture? Yeah. I like what you're doing. I want to take a picture of it. If they say yes, snap. So uh, they say no, I keep it moving. You know, there was a great, there was some advice I got. I forgot who said it, but they, they stopped saying, can I take your picture? Like that sounded so kind of aggressive mm -hmm. that they started saying, I would love to make a picture of you. You know, and, and it, it, instead of take a photograph, it became, it became this whole George? like, I forgot who it was. I, but I, was, uh, I was. I was either watching the same video. Or I think we were sitting talking to George. No, no, no. It was a a okay. real photographer. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, what I mean, it was like a famous photographer that was running a class, and they said, "Make a photograph, make a picture," and uh, it was like a good way to turn it around. And even for for the the person said they had cards and that they would send them the po the portrait they made. So that was like more street portraiture kind of thing. So today, uh, so today I was walking um, my dog, PJ. Um, I saw another Datsun. I have a Datsun myself. So I saw another Datsun. And I said to the lady, do you mind if I take a picture of your dog? She saw I had two cameras on me. So yeah. obviously I've already. Like, and you have your dog with you. Right. right? So oh, please easy it, in. And it worked easily. So she's like, oh, yeah. And then she's like, can you send me the picture? So sometimes they'll help you with it. So don't be afraid to talk to people. The worst they could do to you is say, no, get the hell out of here. Yeah, you know? for sure. And, and if, you, if you don't have a spine for that, then then stick to the bicycles. And know the laws. <laughs> Wait, what was that? I'm totally missing. <laughs> uh, know the laws of where you live because it's totally different. And for the most part here in the U.S., you're kind of, quote, allowed to take pictures of anything on the street. Public you, domain. Public domain. And uh, that doesn't mean you should, you know, get in someone's face or um, – but definitely check the laws in your, you know, if if – you're going to be arrested for taking someone's picture. Because you better not call our lawyer. They're, they're, you know, <laughs> yeah, Tom, Tom right. is not working this week. That's right. All right. I think that's great advice, buddy. I go out there, shoot. That's basically what it's all about. It doesn't matter what camera you have. Just just start shooting for yourself and have a great time. What he said. All right, buddy. I'm in. High five. <laughs>